I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of Starpain in Dorset. It's about three miles to the north of uh, Blandford Forum just off the A350. Um, now today we're going to be doing a roughly three mile circular route starting and finishing in the village and our prime objective is to explore the Hod Hill Iron Age Hill Fort. So do join us. Now, as you can see, I'm squinting in the sunshine. I'm filming right at the end of March. It is absolutely glorious. It's in the morning, it's already about 12 degrees and they're predicting it to go to 22, 23 degrees later on. Possibly the warmest March day since 1968. Perfect for walking. Well, as far as car parking is concerned, there's a, a free car park well signposted in the village. There's also a few spaces in front of the church. Speaking of which, it's just behind me here. And here it is, the Holy Trinity Church. Now, it's not known for sure if uh, there was a church here in Saxon times, but the fact that a gift of land to the church in 1085 is recorded in the Doomsday Book suggests that there was. Now the present church started to be built in 1190 and was completed in 1300. In the 5th century the tower was demolished and a new one built and by the mid 19th century the church was in such a poor state of repair only the tower could be saved. A new chancel and nave was rebuilt in 1858 and the tower, which has got a parapet, I think has got six bells. And it's uh, famous for the fact that uh, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, attended her brother's funeral here in 2004. Well, before we start off our walk northwards, heading towards Hod Hill and walking through the village, I'm going to make a tiny little detour of about 800 yards or so to the south. There's a few things that I want to show you. So, I've got the church behind me. If I just slowly pan the camera around, we're going to follow this little path here. And uh, we've got some sheep on one side and a uh, bank on the other. Now that bank actually is an embankment. It's an old disused railway. I'll tell you a bit about that shortly. Now one of the reasons that I wanted to come out this way, if you look on an old map you'll see remains of a manor house and various embankments here that possibly suggest a moat, a possible cockpit. The area is well known for cockfighting in the past. And sure enough, you can easily make out the uh, earthworks. There's a big sort of ditch there. This may have been built in the 12th century and survived until Tudor times. Well, it's lovely when you see evidence of, well, it's not quite a lost village, but it's a, a lost part of it, should I say. I'm just looking back along that embankment. As I said, it's a, disused railway track. It's the old Somerset and Dorset railway line. The line originally opened as the Dorset Central Railway in 1863 but uh, the track closed in the 1960s and obviously the embankment was where the track used to be but just as I pan across I don't know if you can see up there that's the remains of the old Starpane and Derwiston Holt. It was just a concrete platform with a shelter. And I've actually got an old photograph of the, the first train that stopped there when it was opened in 1928, but the, the Holt was closed in 1956. I'm not actually sure when the, the line removed from here, but the Blandford station to the south was closed and the track was lifted in 1969. But you can't actually get up onto that part of the track to have an exploration of the Holt. It looks as though they're beginning to demolish it anyway. Uh, but just further along, uh, 
the track is used as a, a cycling trailway. Well, just before we turn back to the village, let's uh, have a quick look at the River Stour that's down here. We will be seeing the river later on. I'll just see what have we got down here. A couple of signs. Ah, yes, the White Heart Link. That's a 50 mile circular long distance path that basically links the five main market towns in North Dorset. I'm going to have a little look through here. Obviously uh, now going underneath the old railway line. I love the way the, uh, the ivy has grown underneath. Quite artistic. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just go to the the bridge that crosses the uh, the Stour. I meant to say, as the sun comes out again, the, um, the uh, they managed to resurrect the old sign for the uh, Stour Payne and Doerston Holt, and it's now located at the recreation ground in a wall at Doerston, which is on the other side of the uh, the River Stour. And here we go. This is the bridge, I suppose, links the two villages together and uh, gives us a good opportunity this, uh, to actually have a look at the, the river in more detail. I'll say we will see it later on. But uh, it's 60 miles long. The source is at Starhead in Wiltshire. Its estuary is at Christchurch, where it's joined by the River Avon where it flows out to sea. Right, okay, well we will now head back towards the village and start the walk properly as it were. We're now back at the church, so we'll have a little wander through the village and that'll take us uh, through to the, the countryside. Stourpain gets its name from a uh, estate on the Stour owned by the Payne family. I believe the, the Paynes were the local lords of the manors in the 1300s. Anyway, let's go and have a wander. Wow, it really is a very pretty village. The building here on my left is the old church house built in 1893. It was the village hall and library. And I love that uh, structure at the top. What would you call that, a capello? And then just on the other side is the uh, old schoolhouse built in 1873, closed 1977. Again, a lovely spire on top there. And just on the main road is the pub, the White Horse pub. I'm delighted to see it's got a dog bar outside. And next to that, on the main road is a the toll house. I guess it must be a turnpike road. And that's actually on the corner of a little road called South Home. And if you go down there, there's a quite exquisite thatched cottage called Wee Thatch. And next to that pink building called the Old Bakery. And it certainly is one of those little villages where everywhere you look, there's something a little bit different or unusual to see. Quite fascinating. Now there's the, the free car park that I mentioned earlier. Now we're going to go down Hod Drive but just to my right there's a little brook or stream and that's the River Ewan. I'll tell you a bit more about that later on because we will meet that on our homeward leg. And in the meantime what a gorgeous little thatched house on my left. What's this called? Ewan Cottage. And ahead of us is a track that's going to take us all the way up to uh, Hod Hill. Now, if you're doing this walk in the winter, this track actually gets quite muddy. It's not insurpassable, but um, because there is quite a hard surface but uh, you might want to consider using the eastern route it's a lot drier that way 
and that's the route that we'll be using to come back down. gradually meandering our way uphill, already getting to see some superb bits of scenery. Now on the right hand side, a crop of, uh, can't quite see what it is, possibly wheat, uh, and at the very top is the outer rampart of the fort, which we'll be exploring in much greater detail. And then just on the other side of the path, still a little bit hazy, but some quite gorgeous views on the uh, other side of the valley. Well, if you're going to be doing this uh, route, uh, this is an important little junction to look out for. If you're coming in the winter, then I suggest that you take the, the right-hand path here and go straight up to the hill fort. Um, in the summer, or late spring, um, I'd carry on down on the left-hand footpath which takes you alongside the river. It's just in the winter it gets a little bit too muddy, but uh, hopefully it'll be okay today. Oh, this is really is a very, very pretty part of the walk. We're on the western side of the hill fort, so I'll show you shortly a big, steep hill on one side. But behind me here we've got the uh, River Stow, which is in uh, a very serene state today. Looks very, very peaceful. I say the sun just beginning to get high enough up to um, create those lovely shadows that you still get this time of the year. I was speaking to a local just passed by and he said that you sometimes can see otters on this, uh, this stretch of the river. So um, we'll keep our eyes peeled, shall we, eh? Aha! <laughs> Our first bluebells of the spring there. And uh, it's panning around. There's loads of wild garlic everywhere. And just panning up, you can see the steep side of the, the hill on this side. They didn't have to worry too much about defending this side, that's for sure. But this is quite a, an enchanting sort of riverside walk with, you know, glimpses of the, the river on the left with, I say, the sun, some of the reflections that you're getting off. And it's not, uh, not too muddy now as well, so just perfect. What's he seen? <laughs> Lots of different smells here. He's used to the new forest. I think he's loving it. <laughs> I'm out of breath already, and I'm only at the foot of the hill. <laughs> so I'm going to be approaching it from the northern side which I think is the steeper side. There are easier ways to get up. If I just show you where we're heading, up there. And I think I'm going to have to use some whippet power. <laughs>
whew, we've made it to the top and what a fantastic view we're going to get up here it is a bit blowy so hopefully it's not going to be too bad for the microphone so I better tell you a little bit about this this fort it's actually the largest uh, Iron Age hill fort in Dorset well over 50 acres started to be built in about 500 BC and uh, there was a well-known Celtic tribe that used to live here I can't pronounce their name so I'll put it up on screen <laughs> so let me start to show you some of the uh, the views from from up here so this is looking north quite beautiful views the house there in the very very far distance is Ranston house built in 1753 and it's got a magnificent lake in front of it so let's just carry along so I'm heading eastwards along here so it is quite quite blowy so I do, I do apologize if there's a lot of wind coming through it's perfect for me because it's cooling me down but uh, oh, it's quite uh, quite glorious so let me just pan round and this is looking uh, to the south and it, I say it was massive there was something like uh, 200 huts in the encampment here well it's only when you actually get in the bottom of one of these ditches that you really appreciate how deep they are so there are three banks each with a rampart on top and two ditches and that was on the north east and south side on the west side they just had two banks and one ditch because you had the added advantage of that steep valley that was there in the first place well, I've just come off the top of the rampart just to get out of the wind for a second <laughs> now the Romans came here and stormed the fort in AD 43 it was the uh, second Augusta legion they'd already uh, captured Maiden Castle and a number of other Iron Age hill forts in the south and uh, they actually took over a portion of the fort and built their own Roman fort and I'll tell you a bit about that in a second but the Romans weren't here for that long actually only about six or ten years maximum and then basically uh, it was abandoned and in the uh, 18th and 19th centuries it was uh, used for agriculture so a lot of the area was ploughed it's now looked after by the uh, the National Trust well this area here in the northwest part of the fort was uh, where the Roman fort was built about 11 acres in total and about seven acres inside it was big enough for a cohort of about 600 men 250 cavalrymen and their horses so the cavalry barracks were based on the east side the legionnaire hut or house was on the west side and the legionnaire barracks were behind me in the south Tony Robinson eat your heart out <laughs> well, we're now going to continue along the fort along the top rampart and get some great views again from up here and if I just turn the uh, slowly turn the camera around that's where we'll be uh, heading eastwards and this little bit here you can see there's some grooves and earthworks and this is the um, easternmost end of where the, the Roman fort was on the site <laughs> Still making my way round now on the uh, eastern side and just looking down into the valley and down there is the uh, site of a, a long gone medieval village 
long since ploughed over, though you can still make out contour strips on the old field systems, but the village was deserted possibly uh, in the 15th century. And I guess this must be one of the uh, entrances into the fort, looking at the uh, groove through here. I now finally made it to the southern side of the fort, so well, we'll just turn around and say farewell to the, the central part there. And then I'll just pan round. So this is looking over to the west. It really is quite stunning. And then this is now looking south into the, the village. I can just about make out the church there. So um, we're going to now head back down this little track here. The Hod Drive you can see in the far distance where we, we came up. So it really is just a, an out and back route. Actually I think we might just uh, sit here for 10 minutes for, and uh, enjoy the view for a bit. And this is the River Ewan. Just coming back into the village. Delightful little chalk stream. Its source is the well, just uh, up north at Ewan Minster and it flows down to the River Star just to the south of Star Pane here. And perfect for cooling down after a, <laughs> a hot walk. Well folks we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end piece up here on top of Hod Hill. We hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do make a comment. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That way, hopefully, you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do uh, check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We often put extra bits of information and uh, photographs on that. Well, the weather has been quite glorious today. I can't believe that it's, uh, it's still March. So the good news for us is that it's uh, <laughs> downhill all the way. Although you look as though you could do with a snooze up here. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.